Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangi reporting for the Media Speaks. want to thank all of you for tuning in. Tonight's going to be kind of a fun day because none of the news stories fit together. Like, sometimes everything that I want to report on to all of you just fit into this wonderful, wonderful, uh flow and no this isn't gonna be one of them news is jumping all over today but this is what i found to be the most relevant and that is in fact why i hope anyway you tune in a radioactive leak at a major ukrainian nuclear plant there's a report this is from rt a radioactive leak has been detected at ukraine's Zaporohai nuclear power plant the largest in europe i it says the uh, media report Quote, citing the country's emergency services, Ukrainian officials have denied the report. Life News published what it claims is a leaked report by the State Emergency Service of Ukraine, which denies an earlier assessment by the plant's authorities that the radiation at the facility is equal to the natural background radiation and incident on Sunday. RT is trying to verify the report. Ukrainian authorities have denied the Russian media report that a radioactive leak had taken place at the plant, Reuters reported. I'm going to go on. Uh, those of you regular listeners know I don't just like reading a report, but there's a certain number of facts that are spelled out here well, and I want to make sure you get all of them before I comment on it. The plant works normally. There have been no incidents, an energy ministry official told the news agency. No official comment on whether the leaked documents are authentic has been provided. Two documents released by Life News appear to show that the plant's officials put deliberately misleading information onto their website. The documents both addressed to the head of the regional emergency services state that radiation levels at the plant on Sunday and Monday were 16.8 times higher than the legally permitted norm. So they're either going to raise the rates of what's safe. Isn't that magical how whatever they need the number to be, that's automatically what it is, even though Chris Busby, Lauren Murray, Helen Caldercott, Kevin Blanche, they all warn against that sort of thing. And, of course, you know, we just dispel that. Uh, they could do that. Uh, they could uh, lie about how high it is, or they can um, find other ways of making it acceptable, like burying it on uh, page D of your newspaper. It says, by Monday, the levels had slightly increased, growing from 16.3 to 16.8 times higher. 16.8 times higher, excuse me. And Unit 6 was still down. The report said, contradicting the plant statements that the problem had been fixed and that the plant was operating normally. Well, there's two things you could take away from that as well. One is um, anytime anything is untrue, you get it right away. For instance, let's say I told you that um, Obama had repealed the Second Amendment. Immediately, there would be everybody from the Obama administration uh, saying, you know, that, that's a fake report. That's not true. We didn't repeal the Second. Obama didn't repeal the Second Amendment. He might wish he could, but he didn't. Well, if there was nothing going on here, then they would simply say there's nothing going on here. Second of all, whenever you see things start shutting down at nuclear power plants, then you automatically know there's some kind of a problem, unless it's routine maintenance that was already pre-scheduled in advance. And for those of you that know anything at all about nuclear technology, you do know that it needs to be prepared way in advance. It says, on Sunday, one reactor at the plant was automatically shut down after a glitch, becoming the second halt in operations in recent weeks. The reactor was running at 40% nominal power. The plant's official website said, adding that radiation at the facility being at 8.2 micro... Yeah, I can read. Uh, micro retrogens an hour. I haven't heard it measured in that in a long time. It's usually sieverts, millisieverts, or rads these days. It says the error was later announced to have been corrected and the troubled unit, Power Block 6, was plugged back into the network. On November 28th, it says Unit 3 was switched off for almost a week. The shutdown, which was reportedly caused by a short circuit, was made public five days later. 
the one Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk revealed it during the first meeting of his new cabinet. This is another reason why no matter where you go, no matter what you do, nuclear is bad. If you're in Iraq, it's bad because your religion, the primary religion, can't get along with anybody else, including other factions of its own religion. And uh, you have an issue with earthquakes there. Um, Iran is going to experience a massively high earthquake. There's been many, many scientific studies that have pointed to this being, unfortunately, a likely reality. Um, in Japan, you've got earthquakes. In California, you've got earthquakes. Uh, Russia, the Ukraine, they're fighting back and forth. The U.S. is in it. The EU is in it. Guess what? None of that caused this. Nuclear is always, always, always always bad always can i be more clear how about always guys we're gonna move on to the uk for those of you that are listening uh in the great eu stealth cameras to be installed on motorways in other words this is a way we're going to rip you off why is it a rip off for one thing you can't prove who's driving the car you can't ticket the person that you loaned the car to without changing the law That's not wrongful entrustment. Wrongful entrustment is separate from that, for those of you that don't know. Um, That's just one reason it should be illegal. Um, The Fourth Amendment would be another reason. Again, does does the UK have a Fourth Amendment? You know what? I'm going to be dead honest. I'm assuming they have something like it. Do I know? No. Monitoring organizations have reacted angrily to plans for a new generation of stealth cameras that are to be rolled out on Britain's busiest motorways. Well, maybe we should put some stealth cameras inside police stations, right? If they can do it to us, we can do it to them. How about that? Would the boobies like that? Pioneering digital technology will be used in an attempt to catch drivers breaking the 70 mile an hour speed limit which until recently had been ignored by speed cameras, and there should be no speed cameras either, I might add. The plan forms part of the highway agency's expansion of smart motorways, which use a range of techniques and maximize ease and flow of traffic. Yeah, a smart meter is going to make me move from the duplex that I like living in. Anytime something is smart, it's usually an invasion of your rights. Motoring organizations say the plan will lead to thousands of drivers being handed fines and penalty points on their license for exceeding the 70 mile an hour limit. Critics have also claimed that the introduction of cameras aimed at enforcing the 70 mile an hour limit is not about road safety but about generating income through fines. Well, of course it is. And how do you fight it? Regular, regular Correct Views listeners know exactly where I'm going with this. You fight it by mass refusal. Say that your city has 5,000 people living in it. Okay, how many of them are driving? 3,000, that's great. We'll pick that number. Three grand it is. If 2,000 of those people, two-thirds, swear to God on the stack of Bibles, or for you atheists, swear on the Darwin fish. That you will not, under any circumstances, pay any fines, nor renew any license in any way, shape, matter, or form. Guess what? The government doesn't have enough jail space to jail you on low def, or you on high def. Nope, can't do it. They will only go after the worst offenders. And it will make this law absolutely irrelevant. That is how you fight back. That's the only reason I'm doing this show in the middle of the night. Otherwise, I would be downstairs arguing with my girlfriend. (laughs) If you don't kid, if there's no gallows humor, friends, then it's just all doom and gloom, and you didn't tune in for that either. It says the new devices are gray rather than the highly visible yellow cameras often used around roadworks, raising fears that motorists may be caught off guard. Hopefully people will be spray painting them all kinds of bright colors. I suggest orange and neon yellow because they respond well to those who are colorblind. Uh, it says studies have shown that as many as 95% of drivers admit to breaking the limit on motorways. 
The introduction of cameras in one stretch of M25 in Kent alone has led to almost 700 drivers receiving fines in little or two months. Of course, what has solved this throughout history is uh, parts of Europe. Uh, of course, Germany is known for this. Creating freeways that are made for this. For driving pretty much as fast as you wish. And then other freeways where you have to obey certain laws. And that is always the way it works. Why don't they always do it that way? Why can Germany do it but not the U.S.? Stealing your money, friends. Stealing your money. Uh, this is from Infowars.com. World overpopulation, it asks. Hold on, buddy. This is for, it's actually uh, from William Engdahl. It's from his site, but Infowars has linked it. It said, I first began to seriously look into the arguments that the world faces a terrifying overpopulation problem about a decade back when I was researching for my book, he writes, on the history of gene manipulation, or GMO, that is genetically modified organisms. I was curious and in a strange way impressed with the intensity of the interest of the Rockefeller Family's Foundation and their organizations affiliated with the Foundation to sponsor the study or the application of eugenics. The real story about our global population is radically different from the picture that the mainstream media would have lead you to believe. Let me tell you a few facts that you might not know. Do you know that when I met Alex Jones, I said, uh, I understand you're very busy. He was at a rally. I understand you're very busy. What is the one thing that if someone was brand new to this, what is the one thing that you would encourage them to look up? You know, his answer was it nukes. It was eugenics. Do you want to know when my dad was on his deathbed? He was telling me about studying that he had done before he got sick about eugenics. And how it was going to be taking things over. You might think I'm a conspiracy theorist. Well, guess what? My dad spent most of his life laughing at me. Uh, we loved each other, but we got into many heated debates. But you know what? He saw the eugenics firsthand. For those of you that wish to know, I'll leave it in my comment line or address it later. I don't want to lose everyone that doesn't care. Um, do you know that Hitler was in favor of eugenics? Do you know that the Rockefellers have been in favor of eugenics? All of that where you're going to say, look at those mighty people that have been in favor of it. It must be for a greater good. Why don't we thin out the sickest among us and make us all healthy? That's not what this is about. Just so you know, I'm not one of those conspiracy theory people. I'm not against the kind of, uh, what do they call it, a designer babies. I don't think you should be able to dictate their eye color, their weight, and whatever. And that's no. But making sure your kid has no diseases, you know what? I'm in favor of that. Does that make me a conspiracy theorist in the other direction? I don't know. But what I'm saying is these are the people are leaders that are in favor of killing large amounts of the population in order to be able to reach this higher belief that they believe in, even if you don't believe in God, even if you don't believe in uh, the religions that they follow. It matters that they do because they're the ones that are trying to thin the herd out here. Do you know it's mathematical fact that if you granted the living space of your average New Yorker to everyone in the world, they would fit comfortably into the state of Texas, the entire planet? It's true. Look it up. I, I'm not saying it because I came up with it. I'm not smart enough to come up with it. I'm letting you know what, what, what the truth is because this here is a lie. It says, in the course of my research, I came across documented evidence that the Rockefeller Foundation had not only financed much of the work of Margaret Sender in her, Singer in her eugenics Planned Parenthood organization during the 30s, when her Negro project in Black Harlem was trying to develop ways to eliminate the black population. Here's a white guy saying this is BS. The same Rockefeller Foundation at the same time financed the work of various experiments by the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute during the Third Reich. The point is, there, and you can read the rest of the article for the history of eugenics. I don't want to bore you to death, but here's what you need to understand. There's a population implosion 
there is not enough people being born in the world. Now, granted, we have a lot of people starving in Africa. We have a lot of people starving in China. We have bad governments, and we have bad location. A Sam Kinison is a comedian. I understand this. But he had a very good point. Some people, no matter what their heritage is, should not live where they do. If you are living in Siberia, there's a real good chance you're going to starve to death because it's hard to get the food to you. Why don't you go where the damn food is? Um, if you're living in Africa, do you realize that we could really help them a lot by moving them to different areas of Africa instead of having them live where there is no food that can be grown? We have a very bad management system in this world. We do not have too many people. Listen to this. Please listen to the facts before you try to call me out and you're wrong. It says there's only one problem with their grand strategy of convincing us that there's an overpopulation danger. The world is facing not a population bomb, but a population implosion, a collapse of the human species. Some statistics are in order. It is well established, given average lifespans and death rates, that an average of 2.1 live births per women are required in order to maintain, maintain population equilibrium. A recent study looks at live birth rates around the world, and the results are shocking to some. In Germany, the birth rate has sunk to 1.36 Worse than the low fertility rate of Spain, 1.48, Italy, 1.4, and Western Europe as a whole will most likely shrink from 460 million to just 30 million by the end of the century. The uh, barring, And barring, it says, dramatic reversal of the foolish one, sometimes two, child policies, China's population will be reduced in half. Now, let's pause. I don't want China to take over the United States. I'm not a communist, and I think their government are horrid people. So let's pretend that I didn't just say any of that. China is on the verge of taking over the world. Whether you want them to or not is irrelevant. I don't. It's irrelevant. Do you realize that if they took over the world in 50 years, they're not going to have enough people to maintain it? It will be the, the, you think America only lasted a couple hundred years with it being on top for the last hundred plus years. This is going to be much shorter. There's not enough people being born. Even in the U.S., where a large immigrant Hispanic population has kept the birth rates higher, is now facing a reduction. A Pew Research Center found that the immigrant births fell from 102 per 1,000 women in 07 to 87.8 in 100,000 in 2012. And again, I'm almost 42 years old. I don't have any kids. Part of that is due to a failed marriage. Uh, part of that is due to the fact that my wife and I used no protection whatsoever for almost half a decade and never had a kid uh, Am my shooting blanks or did she have no receivers in the field. I don't know. But I do know that that's one thing. Actually, it'd be two things. A failed marriage, my fault, perhaps her fault, whatever. You know how divorces go. And uh, not having kids, that could be a problem with food. That could be a problem of our diet. We were very poor. We were eating badly. I don't know. And then you have the issue now where um, I would like to have children, and it's almost financially impossible. So there are, other, there are a number of things going into it, but you can't lose sight of the eugenic side. Again, we don't do conspiracy theories of the correct views. We open-mindedly look at everything. And a part of this has to do with eugenics. Not all of it, a part of it. It says, some might argue that overpopulation is a developing world in Africa, India, and Latin America, but even that's not true anymore. The poor, highly fertile countries in the developing world, in part thanks to the Rockefellers and their loveless friends, are no longer producing as before. From 1960 to 2009, Mexico's fertility rate plunged from 7.3 births per women to 2.4. India, you think there's too many people in India? I used to as well, then I read this article. India's dropped from 6 to 2.5, and Brazil's birth rate fell from 6.15 to 1.9. Even in sub-Saharan Africa, there's too many people over there, right? Well, it says the average birth rate remains a relatively high 4.66. Fertility is falling and is projected to fall below replacement levels by the 2070s. 
So there won't even be too many people in the most starving regions. In other words, the elite are getting exactly what they want in the Georgia Guidestones, while you sit there and think the Kesha knows how to sing. Friends, FoxNews.com, Christelle and I are not real big fans of Papa John's Pizza, which is not, not our favorite pizza. I pledge to eat a Papa John's Pizza within the next month. I will do it. I may even put 30 seconds of video online to prove it and bore you to tears. Foxnews.com, Papa John's Pizza stands by the employee who shot an armed robber in self-defense. Papa John's Pizza is standing by a pizza. Well, I just read that. The pizza franchise. Why do news articles do that? I freaking hate that. The pizza franchise told Foxnews.com Thursday that the employee, who hasn't been named, will not be fired from the company after firing the gun, thankfully. The employee was making a delivery to Decatur, Georgia, Sunday when men, when a man, I should say, approached her vehicle, forcing her to the ground at gunpoint, according to the DeKalb County Police Department. The woman, who had a gun in her pocket, was able to fire at the man while on the ground, striking the alleged assailant identified as 24-year-old Daquez Stevenson in the face, which is what he should have got. Stevenson was later found in a neighbor's yard and arrested, according to police, who said the pizza delivery might have been a setup all along. Local media outlets reported that a second suspect carjacked a delivery woman's silver 2000 Honda Accord and remains on the run. Stevenson was charged with armed robbery and was being treated for a gunshot wound at Grady Memorial Hospital in Atlanta. Lucky to have his life. No, I do not begrudge him his life. God chooses not me. The delivery woman's mother had told WSB-TV that her daughter is worried and she may lose her job because she was carrying a firearm at work for protection. While Papa John's prohibits employees, including delivery drivers, bad call, from carrying firearms on the job, the pizza giant said Thursday the woman would not be let go from the company. She instead will be reassigned to another role according to the company, and that's what she wanted anyway, so good! I will eat a Papa John's pizza within the next month. I pledge it. Um, if, um, or at least order one. I'll eat some of it. If, um, if they repeal that about the drivers, I'll eat one a month for the next year after they do it. Friends, uh, I want to invite you before I get to my last three stories to look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. Mike McLaughlin writes some of the best fiction that you will ever read. Um, look him up on Facebook, Laughlin, you, Mike McLaughlin, and uh, you're going to like his poetry, you're going to like his writing style, make sure you let him know that you did hear about it from the correct views. Friends, uh, three more stories to get to, a police chief investigating Charlie Hebdo attack reportedly commits suicide. I had talked about this before, so we're not going to talk about it long now, but I will say this, we have found more and more evidence leading to this case being something that he took as an alleviation of depression, not something so much that he um, took and made his depression worse. I reported on it at the last show, and I wanted to do the update. You can find it at Prison Planet. Um, it raises bells, friends, and I'm not going to let it rest. The last two stories, uh, the last one, of course, the dumdy of the day, and this is right before it. They both tie in to the lie that is global warming. What do I mean by that? I mean that man is not warming the planet. I mean, look up the work of Lord Moncton. I mean, look up the work of ClimateGate.com, and all of this will be abundantly clear to you. Global warming fee added to California as get gas prices before sales tax. How many of you remember uh, Jello Biafra talking about how, uh, what's his name, uh, Jerry Brown was the worst governor ever? How many of you uh, I might remember this? Oh, yeah. Why am I playing God Save the Queen? Why would I be doing that? 
Because then you got the UK pulling off fake speeding tickets. You've got uh, uh, Jerry Brown, the worst Uber Alice governor ever in California. A punk movement, friends. All right, I gave it away. How many of you got it? Anybody know? All right, um, Kit Daniels, Infowars.com. California drivers are now paying a global warming fee added to the price of gasoline before sales tax, forcing them to pay a tax on top of a tax. Isn't double taxation illegal? I thought it was. Is anybody from California listening to this? If so, leave a message in my comment line, um, please. The state is charging gas retailers a new global warming cap and trade fee, and retailers are passing the cost to consumers, but the consumer sales tax is calculated from the full pump price, which includes the cap and trade fee. The global warming fee, which is variable and could soar in the future, of course you know it will, added about a dime this week, Dan McSwain at the UT San Diego said. Then the state adds 2.25 to the full retail price, including those other fees and taxes, while city and county taxes add 0.5% just in San Diego County. So you're paying more for man-made global warming, which isn't happening. They're stealing it from you. That's what that's called. It's called scamming, and you're falling for it. Many drivers haven't noticed the increase yet due to plummeting gas prices, but they will eventually because the 0.10 per gallon fee is not a set price. It's determined by Cali's cap and trade, awful idea, market in which various industries trade their permits covering specific amounts of emissions, the total of which is capped by the state. So basically, once gas prices go up, you're going to get hosed, and if they don't go up soon enough, they'll just raise the tax so that you still get hosed. It says the global warming fee can go up. In August, Cali's legislative analysts estimated that by 2020, retail prices are likely to rise between 13 cents and 20 cents a gallon because of cap and trade, McSwain said. The analysis McTaylor warned that increases could exceed 50 cents in some cases. So they're going to gouge you. It could be up to 76 cents if it was based in state figures. It says it's intentional the cap and trade system was designed to raise gas prices and energy costs using artificial scarcity created through the hoax of man-made global warming. And friends, and that brings us to the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. Staying with the global warming uh, lies here. It's for cat meow. Air regulators ban visible chimney smoke from wood stoves in the Eugene area. Christelle, if we had a chimney, would there ever be a time that you, you might want to just, you know, enjoy your wood stove? Would you ever like to do that? I would love to. Well, great, because you're not allowed to. This is America. Aww. The Oregonian, the dumb deal of the day, wood stove owners in Eugene Springfield area have been pouring on the fuel during the cold snap. And air quality regulators say a buildup of pollution means that burning has to be curbed. A ban on visible chimney smoke could last through Sunday when warmer weather is expected. Now, obviously, the government, uh, Christelle, did they use their psychic mental Jedi abilities to know that there is no air filtration system in the house? Mm, I don't know. Is that how they did that? Because I was under the impression that you could uh, put... Uh, air filtration near your uh, fireplace and you could suck up most of that. I thought that was vented like 50 years ago. You can just, you can make sure your smoke is invisible. Invisible smoke. Now then, now that won't get the dumdy of the day. <laughs> oh, all right, we're playing. Otherwise it would. But that's what they want you to do. She's proven a point. The Eugene Register Guard reports such bans may become more frequent because federal standards on participants Particulate pollution have been tightened. The Lane Regional Air Protection Agency imposed a ban in the mountain town of Oak Ridge Wednesday. In the mountains, you're not allowed to use your chimney or burn wood. Why do I report on this? Get a hold of the Eugene Springfield Area Police. Get a hold of the uh, federal standards 
the people that set the federal standards for air pollution and complain, call them out on their stupidity, friends, and their stupidity will end. Otherwise, I'm doing this show for nothing. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I.B. DeGangy signing off, reminding you to subscribe, reminding you to hit share, reminding you to keep your smoke invisible. Good night. God bless. Please look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself at The Media Speaks.